Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're going to be looking into the Lalama model and how it's getting uh, quantized using the GPTQ uh, technique. Uh, in the previous videos, we looked into the GPTQ algorithm and we covered the paper to try to understand how, how the method works overall. So this video will be more to try to understand how we can actually apply it to different model and quantize them. So I thought, uh, I think this uh, will be good. So this is not going to be a long video because of, uh, like I said, we covered the, these other files. Uh, so I'm just going to be referencing them. Uh, but yeah, I explained each line of code from the previous video from these uh, other files. So today the main file will be these uh, Lama model, um, which we're going to focus into. Um, then in my in my next video, uh, I will be covering the the sparsity GPT. Then what we'll try to do to kind of like uh, solidify our understanding, we will implement it from scratch uh, as our contribution to the Lightning project. So this way we will get to understand uh, in a much more deeper way. So um, yeah. So without wasting any time, actually, uh, let me start and explain to you how actually we quantize the Lama model using the GPT Q. Uh, is a code walkthrough. So um, this function is gonna take the model and the data loader. So I wanna say that with the model, essentially you have to uh, use the hugging face script to convert the Lalama weights to hugging face. Uh, I'll share the blog with you, but uh, essentially what you need to do is just an easy thing to do. You just need to provide the model Lalama weights path and you run the script and it's gonna it's gonna convert it to hugging face. So this is essentially is to be able to use this function called uh, Lalama for casual LM, in which you can pass the hugging face weights that you have converted. Uh, then you can get the model like so. So you know with hugging face, this enable us to get the tokenizers and all of these other things. So uh, I think uh, this is one of the admin that I wanted to tell you so that you know. Then with the data loader, uh, we have we we have the I think it's batch sequence length and the dimension. So we're using the wiki two data set for evaluations. So this is what we have here. So yeah, that's that. Uh, in case you wanna know way to get the data set, you just need to open this uh, data utils uh, files and this. Uh, it's gonna get the data set. So it's gonna load the data set from the data set um, library. So yeah, I think that's that. Um, yeah, that's the admin, <laughs> that's the admin that I wanted to tell you uh, so that you know where uh, all the other stuff are coming from. But anyway, uh, because of we're gonna need to do a forward pass, what we need to do is that we're gonna have to throw these um, norms and embeddings to device and we're gonna have to save this, um, the first layer or the first block. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna also send it to, to to the device because we're gonna have the forward pass on the first block and I'll explain why we have to do that. Then we, we kind of like create these inputs in which we're gonna create the same dimension with our, with our data loader. This is because we're gonna have a forward path on each input and we wanna save the attention mask uh, and the position IDs. That's why we have this cache here, right? So this cache, essentially you can think of it as like we're going to wrap this layer, uh, the first layer, uh, that's what the first layer will be, right? That's that's what we're gonna assign this cache to. So this in essentially is gonna enable us that when we run the first, uh, when we, we, we have our forward path on the model, so we're going to be essentially executing this because we're going to populate this case that you see here. So what's going to happen is that the inputs, the input inside here, right, will be populated with the input that is that is given from the forward path that is coming from this uh, batch here. OK, so then we also populate these attention masks and the positions of the input. That's what we're going to do. Um, that's why here, um, because of this applies only to the first layer, that's why we see we're raising a value error and we're trying to cache it, uh, we're trying to cache it here. Uh, I know that what I'm saying might be confusing. So what I did was to create a similar um, 
similar operation, but in a much more simple way so that you get to understand the concept and you get to see what the output are. So you can think of this model as more like our layer. Then you can think of this as our patch, the one that we're looping through. Then this is the same case that we had. And now we have this input that we created with, uh, with those zeros. So in this case, um, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to actually, uh, from the layers, I'm going to get the, the first uh, layer. So you can think of this as more like a block. A block. So I'm um, just going to print this for you guys to see, see what this is and what does our children does. So essentially, it's going to extract these, um, these uh, layers from this model. But I uh, just want to print this so that you see. So I'm going to print also this uh, layers so that uh, you get to see. Um, so that's that. Then uh, this is the same try and, and, and accept um, block because we have this model and we're going to pass in our input like so. But the, the, the point that I was trying to make uh, when I was explaining was that when we run this model, essentially we populate in this cache. That's because this might not be obvious to most of people because of um, we, we, we don't see where we're running this, right? We don't, we don't see that. And this is because of we doing that when we assigning our layer to this cache. So because of we're going to do the first port pass on the first layer, the first layer essentially is going to run this, right? It's because now when it runs this, it's going to populate this cache. It's going to populate this input. So we're expecting to see the inputs to have the same inputs from this uh, X here. So that's what I was talking about. So uh, I'm just going to run this. I'm just going to comment now so that you get to see the first point. So what these layers are, this is, this is the first layer that we have. Then we wrap it with this Kesha class that we created, this module here. So now when we run this model, what's going to happen is that we're going to be uh, essentially populating the cache. So when we run this, we're going to be, it's like you, you, you can think of this as a forward path within the model. Um, when you do this, obviously, you, you kind of like, because of we wrapped the first layer, we're going to be running this. And this, we know that it populate the cache, it, it populates the inputs. So that's what this will do. So uh, this is this is more like a dummy example. So I'm going to comment this because I'm not using hugging face. So uh, I'm just going to comment these uh, attention here. So uh, let me just run this. And this is what we get. So I'm just going to um, uncomment these, these here. And I'm going to, as an example, because of here, I'll explain what this, this does. But I just want to print the cache now just to kind of like show you what I was talking about. I'm just going to print the cache. And um, uh, so, so we get one, so which means that this code did run because we incremented our, um, our index within the cache, right? So it was zero. So uh, essentially what we can do is to print um, the inputs like so. So uh, this is going to be, you see, I think we didn't call it, I think it was inputs. Uh, it's going to be inputs like so. But yeah, this is what we have. And as you can see that this input here has been populated. So because of when we did the forward pass. But I hope like this kind of like gives you a better intuition of the code and like how the code works. So um, it, it, so that when when I explain like you can you can better understand actually what I was trying to explain. But that's that's what I meant. So uh, you're gonna see that we're gonna take this. We're gonna revert back. Essentially, we're gonna take this uh, this the first layer. We're gonna resign it to what it was back. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say layer dot module. So we kind of like uh, reverting back because of we done, we have populated the cache. So we got, so yeah, I hope you, you, you got to understand actually what the, the, the input and output of this code looks like. Anyway, let's continue. So um, continuing, so we have an, a good idea of what this code is going to return. So uh, just to kind of like give you a better context, um, essentially you can, when we're going to have to apply a forward pass on the, 
on the remember that we have a data set that we have here so we're gonna we're gonna quantize the model right then we have to have a forward pass uh, and we're gonna have to store the output that's what we we have this output here with the same shape as the inputs so hence we needed these attention mask and you know for painting purposes and these position ids um so th that, that's why we, we need these okay so that's that's that then we we can see that we done with what we wanted to do like extracting these um these inputs and the attention mask so what we do is that we're going to revert back by setting these um tokens and um, norms to cpu um we're gonna have these quantizers and what we do here is is that we have to go through each layer so i'm going to show you how a layer looks like because i think this is also important then we have this function here called fun layers so i think this is where things get interesting so if i go to this function by the way is coming from this model utils so this is what we're working with here so essentially this it's gonna it's pretty much gonna take a block and what it's gonna do within that block it's gonna actually loop through to get the the name of like linear layers or whatever it is and it's going to get the child then it's going to append these within this uh this uh, dictionary i know that it might be hard for you to actually uh uh think about this so what i would like to do is that i would like to kind of like have a small demo and show you actually how it looks like coming back to our dummy model so what i meant was that essentially you can think of this as a block right so because of uh, obviously you know a block we have these attentions and stuff but i'm just trying to keep things simple so what i meant was that essentially you're gonna give this this block to to that function that uh that has to extract you know we call it i think full layers then um what it's gonna do it's gonna take uh the the children these these linear layers here including the names of these and it's going to update them in that dictionary. So how does this look like? It looks something like uh, this here. Actually, I think uh, I didn't run this. Uh, I'm just going to run it. Uh, I'm just going to run this so-called code. Um, uh, that's because I've I printed the data just for another example. So I just want to print the child only so that you get to understand. So this is what I'm talking about. So you have this name here and you have this child so that's what essentially we trying to stack inside that dictionary that we were trying to we're going to be retaining so uh because now you have these visualization in your mind so it's going to be much easier for you to kind of like understand as i'm explaining the code what i'm talking about so let's just continue so yeah this is this is you can think of this as like uh it's stacked with those uh linear layers that are coming from the uh, from the specific module, right? That we could have passed in. That is coming from the specific layer, like so. So uh, if argument is true, this is what our, our sequential will be looking like. Um, but if not, then we're gonna be uh, using what we got from the layers as keys. So as you know that this was a dictionary, so we're gonna get all the keys, those names of those um, of those values that we 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 found inside here right like if you can remember from the example that i just showed you now so what we're going to do is that because we could be having a list uh we're going to loop through uh within the sequential um then we're going to have a subset right uh you can think of this as we're going to loop through within these names right to extract a specific name and we're going to find that within this full this full is, is is that thing that is containing those layers so it's more like we are we are it's more like a lookup within that dictionary so that's what we're gonna get so just to uh make example i'm just gonna try to make a quick example i think this is gonna be good uh for most of you guys because i just want you to be able to visualize actually what I'm, I'm actually referring to. Um, so let's say we have a pretty much a transformer block like so. So what I'm thinking about is that you can essentially think that essentially the name here, for instance, we can think of it as a, 
it's a it's a it's a name then when we do this essentially we are fetching this multi-header tension right and we can have a layer norm as a name and when we do this you can think of refetching a layer norm so it's something like this it's a transform block and it's it's a layer right um you know how the transform block is shaped uh it's like we have a layer then within a layer we have sub layers like attention like um multi perceptron all of that right so that's how you should think about this right uh, that's what i meant here so but anyway for now just know that this subset is holding something along this line like so if if the the argument uh was was false because of that's what we will call otherwise we'll be having something like this anyway i hope that uh, uh try to give you a better understanding then we we have this uh gptq in uh, for for each for each of these uh, uh layers here we're gonna pass them through the gptq so we pass the gptq um so that it can be able to extract the weight uh let me share my my other screen so that you see what i'm talking about but before i do that let me show you what this gptq will do i covered this code in my previous uh video so if you really want to get into the implementation of this just just watch it i think you you might find it uh to be um uh, knowledgeable so anyway what we do with the list layer is that we're going to extract the the weights right so um let me show you how how this looks like from an example so that you get to understand what was happening essentially in that code was that um essentially you can think of this model as a layer then within that layer we had um subset right subset was holding those names of those layers so for each case if this is a uh you can think of this as a block then within this block we have these uh sub layers so in this case let's say this is the name of this then we can just say dot this dot weight and then this is what we essentially we're going to pass to the gpt queue you see we're getting these weights here um like so this is what i was talking about so we're going to pass this towards the gptq and this is what um the gptq then is going to create these uh, matrices and it has to uh, use the the dimension of these weights to create the hessian matrix uh let's look into that now um so now we have a, a better understanding of what this code is going to return so we have these weights right so these weights essentially uh, they go going to help us to extract their dimension in order we can create these hessian matrix right so in the paper i did uh, explain why we have to uh, initiate this uh, hessian matrix as a column by column of the weights um, then what this code is going to do is that uh, based on the instance type of the layer we have to uh, transform the weights right so you're going to see this a lot in this source code uh this is just that i think the author wanted to um, accommodate different type of uh, layers so that's why we have these transpose and we flatten some of this uh weights that's that so that's the initialization part that's what is going to happen when we call this um then we have this quantizer so this uh, modulo you can think of it as it's going to help us to find the parameters that we need to quantize so essentially when we quantize we need things such as scale um we need things such as uh zero point and all of i think also mean max so this code is going to do that all right i i do explain these in a more full uh depth so if you are curious of what's going on in here i, I do try to give intuition and i do my best to to kind of like uh explain things that i understand uh so you can check it out to 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 get a full understanding anyway um that's that then we're gonna also configure this uh quantizer based on these parameters here which are coming from arguments um so yeah we we have this uh add batch right so um this is where we're gonna pass it our input data and the output data so what will this do is that the argument batch essentially has to it has to update the hessian matrix in more small like it's scale it based on the number of inputs that we added so uh that's why we have to increment this n sample so this is how we we, we have we we do um element wise multiplication between these this this scala value here okay so that's like um one of the things uh this code here is just like also like i said it's just like uh, transforming the data based on the different layers that we might be having 
So, okay, that's that. Um, just continuing. Um, then we essentially gonna loop through all the end samples. So you can think of this as like all the uh, sequences within uh, all the inputs. Then we're gonna pass them through a layer, right? This is the same layer. So you can think of this a block. I hope you still remember the example that I showed you. Uh, so we're gonna pass this input, okay? Same attention mask, same position IDs, but we, the good thing is that we get the output, right? And we save, we save them within this um, J's throw. That's what we do. So we're gonna loop through and we're gonna save these uh, within this. So that's that. Um, then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna loop through the subset name then we're gonna apply this faster quantizer. So this is where we wanna start quantizing, right? So uh, this code is within this um, quantize, uh, I think, uh, where is it? Was it in the um, GPT? Yeah, but I think it's, mm, yeah, faster quantizer, this is the code. So, uh, this is the code that is going to 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 quantize. So it has this uh, find params. So you can see that this is gonna find the params then uh, based on the weight. So because I here it's gonna use the self, so it's gonna access our weight, then it's gonna find the params like uh, the ones that I explained to you. But essentially, this is the code that um, that is going to quantize. But the point here is that essentially our weight. Uh, the self dot layer data is gonna be updated to these quantas weights. So um, I feel bad not explaining this, but uh, trust me, I, I did it uh, in the previous video. Uh, if you check it out, you'll definitely have a better understanding of what these errors and uh, what they mean. But anyway, that's what we do. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty cool. But yeah, uh, I, I want to point out that the, the layer here, don't forget that it's already being updated, right, by, by this queue. So this queue quantize, uh, it's, it's being populated as we go through and we quantize, the, we, we do the quantization. So we, we do the quantization in a block fashion, okay? Um, so yeah, yeah, that's what we, we kind of like, we, we, we do it. So anyway, that's fine. We up we have this uh, quantizer in the empty dictionary, so we just need to populate it, and that's how we're gonna do it. And yeah, I think, I think that's 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 all is it to it. Then we we have this for loop in which we also gonna run this uh, layer, right? And we're gonna get the outputs like so. So this is within outside of running. Let me see. Yeah, this is, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, this is still within, after we have ran through the uh, the, the, the sequential, so not after the layer, after this uh, sequential set. So yeah, that's fine. Um, we, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna swap the outputs and the inputs. This is mainly because of, because of it's, uh, we have to go to the next layer, so the inputs, the outputs are going to become the inputs to the next layer. So as we loop through, that's what is going to happen, right? So yeah, then we return the quantizers and yeah, that's all it is to this. And now we're going to evaluate this, right? And literally this is the same code, like <laughs> this is now fun, right? But anyway, um, I want to explain this part, which is, um, so we, we, we have, we have we have the model, which is the quantizers. They are not being used. In this case, we're just retaining them and we're holding them here. But the, then we're starting a new thing, which is that we're gonna have to um, we're gonna have to call the Lama evaluate in which we pass the test loader. So this is where we evaluate the the quantization, right? So the model has been quantized at this point, right? It like. Uh, these stuff are doing it in place. Like when we have self layer and we pass them through these classes, they, they, they just like doing it in place, right? So now we have this quantized weight. So this uh, this data 
is being quantized. Uh, so now we have to now have a data set like test data set. This is the same data loader, but different, but for test for, te for test set. So what we need to do is that we need to test the model and see if we can get the same accuracy. So this code is going to do that, right? So, <clears throat> so um, we literally explain the same thing uh, here. We literally explain the same thing. Um, we literally explain the same thing. Uh, this side is that they're doing this batch in a different way. So they're using the indexes instead of getting it from the sample. That's what they're doing inside here. So that's the difference that I'm realizing. So by 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 me saying that we did the same the same way, I mean like it's the same code as this, right? So uh, I don't, I'm just gonna get into the, the the core of this code so that I don't bore you by repeating stuff. Um, so what we what we doing here is that we initialize this quantizer. So we're still doing the same thing. It's just that here is different in such a way that. Um, with the sequential llama, we needed to um, use this GPTQ, uh, and we needed to store all of these within this GPTQ. But in this case, we literally using this uh, these things directly. For instance, we uh, we we initializing the we configuring these uh, these parameters uh, from the quantizer, and we calling them to find the parameters given the weights. Um, these parameters will be used to quantize the, the, the weight. So these parameters include things as a scale, zero, quantizer, max, uh, value. Um, now that we have updated our weight within this layer, so based on the quantized vision, we're just going to have a forward path on that layer, and we're going to store the output inside this. Um, then I think here we just deleting this layer just for memory, and then we're gonna set the first uh, or the previous layer rather to to a CPU because we're not gonna use it since uh, you know we have to go to the next layer, as you can see from this for loop, right? Um, that's that. Then we're just gonna update our output to be input. So this way, um, essentially, we know that the outputs of like the previous layer are gonna be the input of the next layer. That's what this is gonna be. Uh, this is just a, also a simple code whereby <coughs> we have this uh, uh, we have this data set in which it is the, uh, the, the it's coming it's more like a data loader but we want to compare the results based on the output so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna calculate a cross entropy uh, we're gonna initialize the cross entropy because we want to uh, calculate the the negative like uh, log likelihood. This is based on the on the on the uh, on the labels that are coming from the data loader, and also the logit that are coming from the uh, what's this? There's these inputs here. It's just that we applied we apply this um, this head, uh, and we we apply this norm. Okay, we get these logits. Then this is what we 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 gonna apply the we gonna apply this. Uh, uh, cross entropy on these two things then we have this uh, negative likelihood uh, that we're gonna append to this okay that's that but the, the the main thing here is that essentially this allow us to track the the the, the, the how good this uh, quantized model are so we can be able to record the loss uh, so to speak so yeah I think I think that's all this is to this um and yeah i actually it wasn't i feel like it wasn't that much difficult um by the way i think i made a mistake by telling you guys that uh essentially we um we are reusing the same model but it looks like yes it's still the same model that is passed to these functions like the llama sequential and the llama eval but i think we quantize this even during the, the the evaluation, so it's just that I, I think I said something like we 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 will reuse the model that we quantize, but it's not that that the case. Uh, so within this eval function, we still need to quantize the weight of the of the given model. So we have to go through the layers. Then we have to get the output, and uh, the only thing that the, the evaluation part or that that comes into play. Is that the output of the model and the and the data loader outputs 
we we have to compare these um, different and uh, by using the the loss function and to see how off we are. So I think that's what we do. But yeah, I hope this uh, kind of like gives you a better perspective uh, how you can apply this for a different model. This uh, so I think I don't think it's that hard uh, to to implement. Uh, I pretty much have an idea. Um, I hope you guys also did uh, how you can actually do this. So we're gonna look into sparsity GPT uh, in the next video. Um, yeah, I hope you guys uh, have a great one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.